Hello, hello, hello. So today I'm gonna to jump right in. And what I wanna talk about is knowing your products and consistency. So I'm gonna kind of put them together um, because it's so, so important, um, both of them, and they go hand in hand. So when I mean, when I say know your products, that's gonna go into what you're posting, how you're posting it. Um, and most importantly, like it ties in, are you sharing every day? If you aren't, I suggest you start, um, even if it's just one post a day, I try to do two to three posts a day. Um, you can schedule those out so that you don't feel like you're on your phone all day. And I also recommend that you're going live at least once a week. Um, that's gonna let people see your face. They're not gonna forget your voice. They're gonna remember that your business is open. I shared a post a couple of days ago that was talking about, um, it was using the comparison of Target. If Target only had, you know, they didn't have like set hours and the, you know, you never knew if they were open or if they were closed. Um, if you didn't check out that post, make sure that you do. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna read it real fast because it was that good. It was shared from somebody else. Um, and it was just an absolute, like I read it and was like, oh my God, that's absolutely perfect. And I don't know if everybody's seen it. So let me see if I can find it. Okay. It says, let's say my favorite store is Target. If their hours aren't scheduled and they're just open randomly, how likely am I to continue to go there and wait for them to open? Speaking for myself, I would find another store with scheduled hours, some level of consistency to set expectations for future shopping sprees. The same goes for my Sensi business. I don't think of this as a seasonal gig. I want a paycheck from it every month, so I work it like a business. If I stopped sharing because no one liked, commented, or ordered after one post or even a week's worth, I would have no sales. You literally never know. It could be that one extra share that gets the sale. I have had people order for me that I had no idea where even interest were even interested until they either placed an order for themselves or reached out to me to do it for them. Just like any other business, people want to see consistency and know what to expect. Now, I'm not saying I don't have downtime or days that I'm just feeling off, but I believe I have proven I am in this for the long haul and my friends and families and customers see that and they aren't bothered if I'm dormant just for a day or two. So I challenge you to do something this month that may scare you, be consistent, and you will see a change in your business. And I think that is never nothing. I couldn't even make the post that that's why I just shared it because I'm like, I cannot word this any better than it was already worded. And Chance Morris is who originally posted that. So knowing your products and knowing about what to post. So if you just post a picture of from the marketing tab and say, this is this warmer. This is the, you just copy the description of the warmer. Oh my gosh, isn't it beautiful? With a link to buy. People are not going to be interested. They're going to, you know how Facebook now has that algorithm that is telling you if it's a sales post or not. That's what people's brains are already doing when they see your posts, if they're being salesy. So if I wanted to talk about the air purifier, for example, Instead of just posting, now before I had it in my hand, I had to kind of just post a picture of it, right? But I was careful with how I worded it. Now that I have my air purifier, I'm going to take a photo of me holding it, pointing at it, something like this where you're seeing it. And I'm going to say, you know, do you want fresh air and still to have your house smelling amazing? Since he has an air purifier, it is a top of the line product. It has different settings where you can run it for two, four, eight hours. You can even kick it into overdrive to where when it senses particles in the air, it turns red and it will really suck those out. Um, you have a light that you can turn on and off. I'm sharing something that I have. Even if I'm not going to keep this, so if a customer orders something that you may never order, go ahead while before you package it up, get it out, inspect it, which you should be doing anyways, is inspecting the product and making sure it's at good standards before it goes out. Just like if you're a waitress, you check that food before it goes to the table, right? Because you want your customers to be happy, they leave a better tip. Same thing goes with your products. If they come to you, you should be looking at them before they go out to a customer. Make sure they're not broken. Make sure they're not missing a light bulb, whatever the case may be. So 
when it comes in, if it's a product, like someone orders an air purifier, somebody orders a, orders a warmer that you wouldn't necessarily use. Someone orders a buddy, take a picture with it, go live with it. Because then people see that you have the product in your hand. And normally if it's something that you have, that you are using, you have tested, people are going to be more likely to want to buy because you're sharing, not selling. I don't ever say, unless it's like an LTO, I'm not going to say, Hey, if you want this item purchase below, I'm not going to say things like that because that is salesy. I might say, if you love this as much as I do get with me and we can hook you up or something like that. Or I'm talking about my fragrance flowers that I have on my desk. Or I'm talking that, mind you, this is completely gone and it's actually almost hard. It's so old and it still smells amazing. Talk about that. Um, whatever the case may be, if you're cleaning your counters, do a little reel on Instagram or on your Facebook story, sharing what you're using. People have FOMO, fear of missing out. They want what others have. It is just how people, the human being are. Okay, they want what others have. That's why I also tell you to market what Cincy is doing for you. Because if people just see that you're making Cincy posts and, you know, whatever, they're not seeing what this business side is doing for you. So why would they want to join? Why would they want to give it a try if you're not sharing what it's doing for you? Share, don't sell. Um, if you get a new, you know, new wax bar in, open it up smell it. If you don't want to go live, I suggest going live, but if you don't want to do that, open it up, take a picture of yourself with it up to your face and put like, make your eyes big or something, use a filter, whatever, make it fun, make it stand out, make it be different than what the masses are posting. When an LTO comes out, everybody is posting the same photos. Try to make yours stand out and yours different, but stay in compliance. If it's Disney or a licensed product, you cannot alter the photos. Okay. So that is really good. Ask yourself, is your business open or is it closed? Does your customers know that you're always open? Are you open 24 seven? Do I mean taking messages 24 seven, living on your phone? No, but that's why that scheduled post happening three times a day, going live at least once a week. Um, engaging with people. If, they're com if they leave a comment, you should be commenting back within, within the hour or two hours because let's face it, every single one of you is getting on your phone and looking at it for a text message or anything like that at least once an hour. We all do it. It's just what happens, okay? So use your time wisely when you're on your phone. Make sure you are commenting to anybody who leaves a comment to you. If somebody is hearting something, Start harding their stuff back, engage. So those are the really, really big things is knowing your products. If you don't know your products, what you're selling, why would someone buy it from you? You should know them. We sell a training guide each catalog season, a new one comes out, a consultant training guide. It trains you on all of our products that we have. It'll teach, there's a F, facts and answer, questions and answers, FAQ. I don't know what that actually stands for, but on every product too. Want to learn about the air purifier? Go read the FAQ on the air purifier. There's going to be so much knowledge and information there. Um, with, as to with how you get your refills, how often you need to get your um, filter refills. Um, there's going to be information on all of the warmers, all of the diffusers, all, there's FAQs on all of that. Know what you're selling. Be a proud business owner. I was just talking with Megan. Uh, I don't even remember when it was, but we was talking about, you know, when people, we was talking about, are we going to do the Dash to Director program again? And I told her that I'm going to Director Boot Camp in October. And I imagine I'm going to have that energy and that fire and want to pour into all of you. So I'll probably run it again. And she was like, yeah, but what about if people don't show up? And I'm like, well, if they don't show up, they don't show up. You know, you can't control that. And then we got to talking about how when you first start, I'm not going to say you, when I first started with Sensi, I like when I told people that I sold Sensi, I would kind of giggle and I'd be like, I know I'm just doing it to, you know, get my stuff at a discount. I kind of was, I, I 
before people could make fun of me for doing direct sales, I made fun of myself. I laughed about it before anybody else could. And you may be in that part in your business to where you're not taking it serious. You know, when you're kind of shy to tell people that you do it because of the stigma of MLMs, or maybe you've been in a different MLM and it didn't work out. So you're kind of hesitant to really put yourself out there, completely understand that. But I will tell you that when I stopped and changed my mindset, which is when I started consistently doing 2K a month, when I grew my team, you know, it was about, I would say it was about mm, three months in when I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop laughing at myself. I'm going to stop belittling what I'm doing because if Chloe Cox can do it, if JC can do it, if any Melissa Gratz can do it, if Chelsea Otto can do it, they are no different than me and they are no different than you. The thing is <clears throat> what they did was they kept going. A lot of people in direct sales, when they hit a rut, when things aren't good, and which means they need to be connecting with new people, but they're like, well, I don't know how to connect with new people. This just isn't for me. I didn't get in early enough or whatever. It's the people who push through that and keep going. They are the ones who see success. I've had dips in my business, but I'm consistent. I know my products and I share what I'm using in my day-to-day -day life. I use Scentsy every single day of my life. It's in my car, hanging over my mirror with a car bar. It's in my vents, car bar clips. And I also have a mini fan diffuser with a pod in my car. Do I change them all out all the time? No, that would be a waste of money and way too strong. I don't need all of that. So I'll just rotate. You know, This month I'm gonna change my car bar. So I'm gonna do a reel about it. I'm going to take a picture on my way to work talking about how good it smells driving to work today. I'm going to next month. I'm going to change my car bar clips. Make sure you clean your vent before you take that photo or you go live. Right. Cause if you're like me, they get dirty. Um, and then I'm going to be like, this is another one of our options to make sure that your car smells absolutely amazing. Isn't this great? I'm sharing what I'm using. I'm not just sharing a generic photo. That's why I try to go live when it's a new product, when I'm putting something new out because I don't want them to think it's just a fake product. Or if I'm taking a picture, I have tattoos all over me. I try to make sure that they see my tattoo in the picture so they know that it's mine. If I get a buddy, my face is in the photo next to the buddy. Hey, look at this buddy, right? They know it's me. They see my face. I bought this product. I have this product in my hand. I stand behind this product, okay? I don't sell a lot of Scentsy Goes because I don't use the Scentsy Go. The proof is in the pudding. You don't sell a lot of diffusers. It's probably because you don't have one and you haven't went live and you haven't shared and talked and tell, told everybody how much you love the diffusers. Share what you're using in your everyday life. Um, let's see. That is kind of what I have for today. Um, I didn't want it to go real long. It looks like we, I just kind of rambled for like 15 minutes, but there was one thing I wanted to, that kind of went along with it that I wanted to share. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so this is from Denzel Washington. So I was listening to um, some speeches. Um, I like to listen to motivational speeches and different things. And I ran across this book and it's nothing but like the best speeches and they are commencement speeches for college graduates. And there was JK Rowling, Denzel Washington, Matthew McConaughey. Um, I mean, just Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. There's so many people um, and it's just speeches that they've done. Denzel Washington, I'm gonna paraphrase him, but he said, fall forward, not backward. If you go, if, do not ever go backwards. You've already been there. You can fail, but you need to fail forward because you need, you have to take risks. And then when you take those risks and you get out of your comfort zone, you might fall, but fall forward. If you fall backwards, you've already been there. There's no success in falling backward. You need to fall forward. And if you are constantly putting yourself out there and trying something new, you will fall forward. It says, um, every single person will, fa will fail at some point in your life. However, embrace it. It's okay. Fall forward and people won't remember the failure. What they're going to remember is the time you succeeded. So if you have been at this for two months, three months, four months, five months, it's okay. 
people don't know that you haven't grew your team. People don't know that you haven't reached that sales goal and even apply this, even in not since apply it in your real life too, because they are only thing that people remember is that time you were successful. They don't remember the times that you failed unless you fail backward and you just stay there. You have to fall forward. Uh, don't quit. Don't fall back. Have faith. Fall forward because you don't have anything to fall back on. If you're going to fall back, fall back on your faith that you will keep going. Everyone has the capability to, to succeed, but do you have the courage to fail? Do you have the courage to put yourself out there and it not go well and keep going? Do you have the courage to reach out to 10 people a week and ask them to join Sensi? That's a lot of people, right? You scared of them saying no to you? Are you scared you might sound dumb? That they may think your business is dumb? That they may be an anti-MLM? Don't be afraid of none of that. Try it anyways, reach out. Hey, have you ever thought about getting your own personal Sensi at a discount? A lot of people join Sensi in the beginning. I'm one of them. I joined just to get my stuff at a discount. Don't ever count anybody out because the people that you would least expect it will be great. Do you have the courage to fail? Do you have the courage to have people tell you no? No, I don't want to. No, thank you. It's okay. They say that it takes 10 no's to get one yes. And guess what? That one yes may never do a single thing. They may say yes. They may act like they're super excited. They may say that they want to do this, but then they never even open their kit. They never look at their training guide. They never do a launch party. So it's okay. It's okay. Does that matter at all? No. That's why they say match energy. If so you get a teamy and they aren't wanting to do anything, you're going to know just because they verbally tell you, hey, I want to recruit. Hey, I want to do parties. Hey, I want to make real money with this. Match their energy. If they are showing up, if they are asking you questions, and then when you tell them something, they're implementing those things that you told them. They're implementing it. You can see, match their energy because they want it. You cannot waste your time on those people who your one yes out of 10 no's. You're so excited because you finally got a yes. And then when they don't do anything, it lets you down. But it's not your failure. You did what you were supposed to do. You were there for them. Keep going. Go for 10 more no's. I had a, a go for no challenge. Nobody ever sent me their things, but that's okay. Go for no. So I don't want to ramble on anymore. Do you have any questions on anything that I said today? Or anything else for that matter? I have a question, but it has nothing to do with what you went over. That's fine. Um, so I was going to do a sample of a mixed um, wax. Do yep. you melt them together and then do your, like, dip your felt like that? Or do you do half and half half and half okay yeah. i just wanted to make sure i've before. never done a mixer on felt i've always my mixers i guess i have personally always done in the fall where i just cut a like sliver of one and a sliver of the other but if i was going to do felt i would dip it half in one and half in the other that's how i would do it Okay, so you if you do like a mold, you do one and then you let that dry and then do the other one on top of it. Is that what you said? Sorry. I don't do molds ever. Oh, but okay. if I'm doing felt, I would dip it in one side and then dip it in the other. If it's okay. fall when stuff won't melt, I would yeah. just do like a little crinkle cut of one and a little crinkle cut of another and put them in the same bag. Like I did okay. um, poison apples last fall and I did um like not a little sliver like for so if it was like um for an order like a thank you i did a half a cube of caramel apple or yeah caramel apple craze and half a cube of um black raspberry vanilla i think and those were my poison apple mixers or whatever for like september or october like a halloween time um uh -huh. 
uh yeah so that's what i did and i just did like a half a cube but no i don't do molds um i don't have the time for molds uh they never end up cute by the time they actually get to the people and it takes a long time to do them so i don't do them okay thank you do you have any other anything else either of you All righty. I see iPhone came unmuted. Do you have anything? Okay, Jay, it's just me. I've just been really, i just been really sick, so I haven't been able to do anything. Yeah, I get it. I don't even know what day it is half of the time. But I hope that this helped with you guys and if you do end up having some questions, I will um, post this recording. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.